How's it going YouTube? Forsaken Classics here. Today I'm going to teach you how to do brakes on specifically a 2010 Ford Escape but you can use this principle to most any other car that has disc brakes. So without further ado let's get into it. These are the tools that I recommend having to complete this job. I recommend having a good jack, a decent jack stand, a good set of wrenches, a hammer or a kneecap abuser or adjuster. I'll go with adjuster. Uh, a couple cans of brake clean, some high temperature grease, and means to take your tire off. So the first thing we need to do is jack up the vehicle. When jacking a vehicle, you want to make sure to put the pad on something like the frame where it's extremely strong. Some people recommend going on the pinch weld here. When you are using an emergency jack, there are jack places for that there. But when using this style jack, go for the frame. It's the most stable and best way to jack a vehicle. And while you're jacking it, keep an eye on it and make sure that pad is not slipping and the jack is not going off kilter. Best way to make sure of that is make sure your jack is square with the body of the vehicle. You hear the tire coming up. And we want to go to where you got about an inch underneath and you can do that with it. Now, if you're not using the impact, it's a good idea before you lift the vehicle to break the lug nuts loose. Not take them off, but break them loose because putting a pry bar on the lug nut will put unnecessary strain on your transmission and axles. So now we have it up in the air. Let's take the jack stand. Ooh, sprinkler kicked on. And put this on the frame as well. And we'll get that as best you can on a strong point in that, on that frame. And then what we want to do, I'm going to set you down for a sec, is slowly release the pressure onto the jack stand. You want the jack stand to be doing the work, not the jack. The jack is just there for safety. And once we get the tire off, I'll show you an additional safety step that we could do to prevent getting hurt. The next thing we need to do is remove the tire from the vehicle so we can access the brakes. Oh, Ford's in their swollen lug nut. Yep, swollen lug nut. I hate it. They have these stupid tin caps on top of them that swell and stick inside your socket. Now I am using a 19 millimeter socket. On modern vehicles they are 19 millimeter. They used to be three quarter, but that was before we switched to metric on our vehicles. Now I know there's a very minuscule difference between a three quarter and a 19 millimeter, but there is a difference. So, we got the tire off. Sometimes you live in a rust belt, you might have to kick it or hit it with the old kneecap adjuster. Just smack it right on the edge of it and I'll bring it right off. You don't want to hit the rim because you can actually damage the rim. So, my additional safety tip, I don't hear a lot of YouTubers or anybody talking about this. This must be an old timey thing where you roll the tire underneath the vehicle Just enough out of the way so it catches somewhere on the frame like over there and if your jack stand fails and your jack fails you have your triple protected this vehicle is not going to drop on you it's some fireman is not going to scrape you off the ground sorry to be brutal but that's the way it is okay so now we got this off to make life easier i'm going to turn the wheel this way so that we can access the back of it even better. Okay, 
there's a few more things that I need to add to our list of tools because of the type of piston of uh, piston pin we have here or slide pin we have a slide pin that uses torx bits i know i'm missing a few they're in my toolbox anyways you don't want to cheap out on these you don't want to get the harbor freight ones because these have a tendency to snap off for example this was not a cheap set this is matco's silver eagle which is basically their blueprint and I broke one. So definitely not a tool to cheap out on. So what we do is we try to find the right size for this pin right here. You wanna take this dust cap off and do not lose these. These help protect the pin so that it actually could do its job and slide back and forth. So I'm gonna bring you in here. Can you see? Come on, camera. And maybe a little closer. How about that? That's probably as best it's going to get. Anyways, so find a good place for these caps. Take them off. There's one at the top and the bottom. It rides on two slides. You find the right size. Ooh, first time. It is a T45. Get that baby in there. And a little trip trick to do this even quicker is you only have to take the bottom one out. I know, weird, right? So, get this baby out of here. And you can tell when it's loose because it'll start, you'll be able to, whoo, sorry about that, motion sickness warning. You'll be able to take a screwdriver, oh, other tool, I forgot, big screwdriver be able to pry the pin out and see that right there that star pattern and it matches that and you want to be careful because some of these are uh actual allen heads but you will definitely want to match the correct uh correct tool to the correct correct pin so another tool besides the big screwdriver is a bungee cord and i'll show you in a minute why we want that but another trick is you gotta re retract this piston on this caliper here to be able to get it off easy so take your screwdriver in between the rotor and the pad and give it a good pry now slowly push that back you might not want to do this if you're going to resurface these but i'm not i got all brand new hardware and brand new shoes and all that so marred up and you can actually push this all the way in if you take your time so you don't have to take a clamp or a special tool or whatever it's called and you push it in. Woo! You gotta be careful. All right, so now we got that push in. This should lift right off as soon as we take this clip off right here. You gotta get your screwdriver in here, try again. And that's how you do it, apparently. I love Ford engineers. Not. Anyways, we left that top one on. This should be able to go out and flip it straight up. Just like that. Pull the pad off. Toss it aside. And this is where you want your bungee strap. Wrap it around the shock tower, top spring, or something up there. You'll find something to wrap her on. And the reason you want to do this is you don't want to put any strain on this brake line. So we hook it on. And. No. Be nice to me. Come on now. There we go. So that line is nice and loose. That's what you want. You can see the previous crease still. That's a good sign. So now we got to take this uh, bracket off. To do that, I believe it's a 19, 18, or 17. It's an 18. Yep. All right. 
So down is going to be taken off, but a lot of times, well, let's take that pin out of the way. Why not? Don't want to break it. Plus, we got to clean it up anyways. So, sometimes these are really hard to get. A little trick I found is take your hammer, actually, and you can actually hit your wrench. Bounce, 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 bounce. And it works like an impact. If you don't have an impact. Or you could pretend to be Thor or go get a breaker bar. But... I like the old kneecap adjuster. Kneecap adjuster? Is that a good nickname? Write it down in the comments. Let me know. While you're there, give me a like. It really helps. And now you. Yeah. So now we're getting these unthreaded. Do 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 do. Do do do. Put those in a safe spot. And now we have the frame here, the caliper hanger. So now what we wanna do is get these cleaned up with your brake clean, or if you have to, hit it with a wire brush or some sort of way grinder to remove any rust because you want this smooth so that your pads get right in there nice. I'll go clean it up and I'll be right back. We'll be right back after a word from this little eel. Oh, Mr. Spotted Garden Eel, what are your words of wisdom? I like digging in sand. Please like and subscribe. That's some pretty good advice, Mr. Garden Eel. Oh, you're still recording. Huh, good thing I cut all that out. Anyways, today's flavor of brakes is Detroit Axle. Not sponsored, love to be. These guys put out a pretty good product. But oh my gosh, comes with brake clean and fluid? Okay, I swear I'm not sponsored by them. I'd love to. If you guys are listening, Detroit Axle, please talk to me. Forsakenclassics at gmail.com. Anyways. I've never had that in a company. That's amazing. Oh, but that right there. I don't know. Let's see. All new hardware. Man, I, I'm impressed. Not gonna lie. Looks correct. At least, why, why would you choose the name Detroit if you're made in China? It's the only thing. Uh, Alright. So now, let's get these parts on the car. I'll show you how to do that, obviously. That's why you're here. Do. All right. Okay. Now we need to remove the old one, old rotor. This is called a rotor for my sister who wants to learn what car parts are. Rotor. Sometimes they have a little set screw in here that you have to remove from the hub. Just uh, pay attention to that. Sometimes you do have to hit them with a hammer, but I fortunately live in the south and I've done these before and I always put just a little bit of grease on there. Just a little bit to keep it from sticking. So I'll show you how I do that. You basically want to remove everything you can from the brush and just barely put a little bit on. You put too much on it could actually swell up and stuff, but just enough to coat it. There there really isn't any grease in here. It's mainly just like an oil. This is older, but it's still high temp, so 2,000 degrees. Your brakes get that hot. <laughs> you don't need to be driving on the street like that. Just my opinion. All right. So, barely hang this on the edge after we grease that. Because you want to avoid getting any grease on this side. Take your brake clean. You gotta degrease these. Because they come with a film of grease on them. 
or oil from the factory to keep them from rusting. But don't be afraid to put that on that side like that. And you can actually take one of your lug nuts to hold this in place. Keep her from moving around on it. Keep her straight and everything. Take your brake clean, solder down, get all the grease off of it so you don't embed that into your brake. Now, let's put the hanger, the, the caliper hanger back on because you can see it kind of clamps the, the rotor in there. Oh, another tip. Just a touch of grease on this hardware goes a long way. Really thank the next guy or you. And then you can be like, thanks, passed on. And I could, and your past self could be like, you're welcome, future Don. Is that weird? I don't know. Don't care. Just talking to strangers on the internet. Probably seem like an idiot to my neighbors out here talking to myself. Anyways. Do, 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 do. Now there is a torque spec on there, but I say go almost as far. Okay. You gotta get the old natural torque wrench going. Go until you hear a click. There it is. I made a little more. There we go. All right, and this one, same thing. Okay, there it is. You just go a touch more. There you go. That way, and you give it a little wiggle too. Make sure everything's tight. Because sometimes you get a false tightness. And you'll be taking her on a test drive and you'll find out some is very wrong. And then you have to take it all apart and that ain't fun. So now, let's put some pads on. Let me go get those. Arbor Freight, if you're listening, I need a stool. All 68 of my subscribers say I need a stool. Or 67 after this video. You can reach 67 people, Harbor Freight. That sounds like a good deal for me for a stool. 68 people? She sounds like a deal to me. So this one's kind of fun to get in. You just gotta kind of line her up. Sometimes they spread them a little too far. Oh, that's a loud neighbor. What are you doing over there, neighbor? Ow. Be nice. There we go. She just snaps in there. Like that. Take your goop. Maybe a little adjustment so you guys can see better. Oh, beautiful. That's perfect right there. Take your goop. Get a little baby touch where they ride. Because your brakes actually ride on these back and forth every time you hit the brake. And also, it doesn't hurt to do that, too. On the very edges, can you see? Eh, probably. If not, I'll show you in a sec. But, grab your other pad. Make sure you don't get any grease on here. Slide that baby right there, like that. Then, let's see if the caliper fits. Oh, bonus thing. Don't, make sure this uh, is not twisted at all. It'll restrict uh, brake flow, fluid flow. Okay, apparently the piston did not go far enough back. So, let's hook her back up, unfortunately. And we're going to have to take that pad out and press it back. Dang, I thought the screwdriver would be enough. A clamp. Because, take that, you got to press the piston back in. She'll go slow. Take your time. She'll go back in. She doesn't. You need a new one. I hope we go back in. Come on, go back in. Be nice to me. Alright. Whew, it's 
getting warm out here. All right, so let's try this again. Okay, now we have the pad back on. Let's see if it goes back in. Like a glove. Okay, next step is you got your, uh, your slides from earlier, your slide pins. Give these guys a fair little coating of grease. Don't be afraid. This is the most important part. This is what your whole braking system rides on. I know it's weird. You trust your whole life to that. Two of those little guys. Well, per side. Anyways, so I don't get grease all over my fingers. Take her on a two. Line her up. Starter, starter, range, send her on home. She likes to go home. That's where she belongs. And this one you want to be careful because you can strip these out. Just, you'll get a feel for her eventually, but don't kill them. Just tight. If you're worried about, look up the torque spec done this so much I don't look up torque specs anymore so I just know now if it's something like an intake manifold or something like that I do this stuff I just know you just know these things Get it started on the bottom. And if it isn't going, you're cross-threading it. And you want to stop right away. Or you have to buy all new parts. There you go. Nice and good and tight. That's the Germans say. And you can test your brakes and your slides by wiggling it back and forth before you touch the pedal. If you can do that, nice and easy, that means you're good. It means it's good and tight. So now we got these brand new clips. Man. Starter down there like that. But then you have a fun time trying to stretch them up on. That ain't gonna work. There we go. If you're worried about it, a little tap, 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 baroo. Make sure everything's good in there. Give it a little slide again. Now see that clip held it in place. Made it a little bit harder. That's intentionally so this ain't flopping around in the wind. All right, and that is all there is to doing brakes. You wanna make sure everything is able to move fine and smoothly and make sure everything, like your slides are lubed up, but you wanna keep it away from the faces of the rotor. That's the most important thing. You don't want greasy brakes. Come on now. All right, I'll go knock the other side out and then we will go for a test drive because there's more you have to learn before you even move this vehicle. Because I've seen people do brakes, hop in a car, well, brand new technicians, and they hit stuff because they don't realize your brakes ain't gonna work until you pump them up dummy and i'm back okay now earlier i was talking about how you don't want to you want to break the tires loose the lug nuts before you jack it up if you're going to use a breaker bar or four-way or tire iron whatever i mean your teeth even you don't want to do that because I'm not going to do it because I don't want to hurt the transmission. But you see, if it's up in the air, you can move the wheel back and forth. The only thing that's keeping this wheel stationary is the other side of the car and the gears in the transmission. And if you were to crank down on that, you could damage the gears inside the transmission. That's why it's important to first Ruby jack stand. A little more. Remember, you want to put the weight of the car on the jack stand. 
make sure everything's clear Every, everything's somewhat snugged up on the wheel all the lug nuts and then slowly I hate this jack and you get a new one let her down and this slow so you don't shock it or anything like that or break anything pull your jack out then you want to tighten everything up and you always even if you're using uh, impact or even with torque sticks go around with your wrench and make sure everything's good and tight you don't want this wheel coming off on you or a customer ask me how I know it wasn't me it was one of my co-workers okay now all the tires are torqued down they're all everything's together we made sure everything moves good on the brake system and everything is tight as should be the next thing we want to do is you want to pump the brakes and you, you hear that clicking Shh. that right there that is the caliper getting fluid back in it and making sure that you can build pressure in the, and squeeze the caliper together the caliper onto the disc I actually saw and this is terrible for the technician and the owner of both vehicles involved a new technician just did his first brake job literally his first one and he did not pump the brakes before trying to move the car he put it in gear on well, reverse because we had to back out of our racks racks meaning automotive lifts and he went to hit the brakes and they wouldn't stop the vehicle because it wasn't pressure inside the, the caliper so he ended up running into another customer's car with his customer's car you talk about a bad situation you don't want the same thing happen to you always make sure you got good pressure before you try to move the vehicle now let's get this baby started up and go for a test drive and well don't want to get flagged and we will uh break the brakes in i'll show you how to do that the bed men is what it's called all right we're on our test drive here we got our brakes pumped up and everything i have the pick and gilla with me riding shotgun pick and gilla what do you think it means to bed in the brakes you what bedding in brakes what do you think that means i don't know to bed in the brakes means to set them to the rotor so that they grip properly. And to do that, you need to get going at a decent speed and well, get on your side of the road, dude. And you gotta brake aggressively. You wanna heat up these brakes. So, you wanna make sure you're not around anybody. And you wanna get a nice straight piece of road so you get up to speed and stop. And preferably do this in Mexico. But get up to speed, you know, 40, 50. Or get up there. And break. You do that about three or four times. And that is bedding in your brakes. That's it for today's episode. This week, week, we're going to go with week. We're trying to do this every week. Anyways, um, if you noticed, this wheel is a lot cleaner than when we first started. If you want to see me how I did that, check out this video, I think, up here. Yeah, it's up here. And if you like this content, click down here. That'll take you to my page where you can subscribe. And I really always appreciate likes. Thank you very much, and y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you.